everybody, and welcome to the St. Francis Hospital Cardiac Imaging Lecture Series. Today, we're going to talk about how to get appropriate TE views for the assessment of candidacy for a mitral clip procedure. The three-dimensional TE is the single most important thing in the planning for the mitral clip procedure and can determine success or failure. Today, we're going to go in some detail as to the necessary views and the evaluation. So the first basic question we need to answer in our detailed assessment is that, do we really have surgical grade mitral vegetation? Meaning, is it really moderate to severe or greater? Here, no eyeballs are allowed. You need to have accurate quantitation of the severity of regurgitation which can be done with 3D full volume acquisitions and 3D evaluation of the area of the vena contracta. In addition, PISA quantification of the ERO regurgitant volume and regurgitant fraction, especially in people with low ejection fraction, can also be very helpful. Bilateral pulmonary vein interrogation is also necessary as well as a computation of regurgitant jet area. Furthermore, we want to make sure that our measurements are reproducible and not are happening just out of chance, uh, especially the 3D measurements. So it's important to get multiple 3D acquisitions and multiple 3D assessments for the assessment of the severity. Once we assess that we have surgical grade, then we can look at further detail. So other things we want to know is now, what is the mechanism of MR? And may, keep in mind that there may be, and there often are, more than one mechanism. Is there annular dilation? Is it functional? Even if it is, it doesn't mean that there isn't other concomitant leaflet pathology. Uh, is there any prolapse? Is there any flail? Uh, what are the leaflets? Uh, motions look like? Is there any systolic or diastolic restriction? Is there any ischemic injury or scarring? Is there any rheumatic disease? Is there any pseudoprolapse, which would be in concomitant with restriction and different than actual prolapse? Furthermore, other than the mechanisms of MR, what do the leaflets look like? That's very, very key because not only is the pliability important, but also the length of the leaflets is important, leaflets that are unencumbered by calcification. Because if a portion of the leaflet has calcification, it cannot be counted as leaflet length for the grasp of the mitral clip because it will not be able to grasp well. So when we're measuring the leaflet lengths, we have to look at areas that are unencumbered by significant calcification. We furthermore want to know where the calcification is at the annulus or the leaflet tips. We want to know how thickened the leaflets are. Thickened leaflets are a little more forgiven for multiple grafts, whereas fibroelastic dysplasia is less forgiven, and you can actually cause laceration of the existing leaflet, causing more MR than you bargained for. And furthermore, you have to really localize where the mitral regurgitation pathology is, and you've got to be very specific. Is it in the A2P2 region, or is it in the A2P2 region and A1P1 region? Remember, there could be more than one jet pathology. And it's important to determine the primary location where you think the most MR is, because often you may not have the luxury of multiple clips. And this is because you need to have an adequate mitral valve area to begin with. And one way we calculate that is we can do 3D planimetry from full volume or live 3D. And the important thing there is, note, a lot of patients may have mitral annular calcification. If that is so, you need to calculate the 3D mitral valve area at the annulus and further down at the leaflet coaptation. So the body looks at the smallest mitral valve area, would be the annular area, from the calcium. However, 
our procedure is only going to affect the mitral valve area at the coaptation zone. And often they can be very different. And 3D planimetry of the mitral valve area is important because we know how variable the mean mitral valve gradient can be dependent on heart rate and also dependent on loading conditions. Now, this is the general schematic that we're gonna see on our 3D view of the aortic valve. This is called the surgeon's view. The aortic valve is at 12 o'clock. The left atrial appendage is to our left, connotating the most lateral aspect of uh, the valve. And here we have the valve leaflets, the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet broken up into three different segments. The A1, P1 is the most lateral next to the appendage. A3, P3 is the most medial located near the interatrial septum. And this is a 3D view that we need to get uh, of the mitral valve detailing all these structures that we have outlined. And here we can see if there's any areas of prolapse or flail. And of course, we have to put color Doppler as well and see where the biggest jet is, how long along the coaptation plane the jet uh, of major regurgitation is, because that'll affect how many clips we'll need and how many jets there are. There are furthermore multiple transesophageal 2D views that are necessary. And um, we're gonna talk about several of the most important ones, but it's very important that you corroborate your 3D findings with 2D findings. And here, one of the most important views is the intercommissural view, which you can find in 40 to 80 degrees. And here in the intercommissural view, we have our P1, where the left atrial appendage would be, A2, and P3. And we can see that this will help us localize where the jets are medially, laterally, and if there are multiple jets. The only thing to keep in mind is sometimes you may see a jet here, P1, A2, and A2, P3, and call it two jets. But remember, in the intercommissural view, you don't see the rest of the coaptation plane. And on 3D, you have to put these images together. It, may, it just may be it's a wide jet. That's one jet encompassing uh, all, all the segments of coaptation uh, in this region. So sometimes you have to be careful to note how many jets there are and look at the 3D in conjunction. Furthermore, here we have a actual intercommissural view where we have our left atrial appendage, P1 segment, A2 and P3. And from that view, we can actually explain 90 degrees to get our 120 view, which is the long axis view. And uh, here we have our A2, P2 segments, and we can take some nice measurements of the leaflets. And these are typically what we call our grasping view for the mitral clip. And here we could see an actual long axis view with our anterior leaflet and our posterior leaflet, which we'll use for grasping. The other view that's important is the four chamber view. And this is a pretty versatile view because from this view, approximately zero to 20 degrees, we can see multiple segments of coaptation. So very high up, in the blue line here, we're going to see A1, P1. A little further down, we're going to see A2, P2. And further down deeper, we're going to see A3, P3.
Now, we talked about uh, determining if the patient is suitable. Uh, the latest recommendations uh, are very different from what was originally done in the Everest trial. And it's pretty amazing at the different cases, complicated cases that we do here at St. Francis Hospital quite successfully, despite not meeting the Everest criteria. So initially with the Everest criteria, you wanted to have an A2P2 pathology. Why? That was the most conducive for the mitral clip because in the A2P2 region is the region where the leaflet is absent of cordal attachments. Therefore, you will have less likelihood of entanglement uh, of the cordae. But despite this, with various techniques, we've been able to go further and further out in both medial and lateral directions and get more challenging jets that are close to cordal attachments. Then this can be done with careful planning. So right now, other things, A2P2 is not the only thing out there. We can do peripheral morphology, as we said, A1P1 and A3P3. Furthermore, our mitral valve area prerequisites, and this should be determined from 3D TE planimetry. Uh, ideally, it should be greater than four, but we can do mitral valve areas greater than three, even though there is a risk for stenosis. And the posterior leaflet length can be as small as seven millimeters. Furthermore, with advances in technology, the flail width also can be greater than 15 millimeters because there are grasping hands that arms that can grasp independently and you can get very big gaps. You have some absolute unsuitable mor morphology. And I think uh, in these areas, uh, the mitral clip is not going to be your answer and it's going to be very risky. And sometimes it can be difficult cases because they could fall in between. But a very careful evaluation can help you prevent major pitfalls during the procedure. And remember, you can start off with moderate to severe or severe MR, but if things are not done correctly, you can end up with torrential MR and a patient that is vent dependent. So it's very important to do pre-surgical planning carefully with TE and assess each patient carefully for candidacy. I hope you found this video both enjoyable and informative. If so, smash that like button and follow us on YouTube channel and Twitter.